Welcome back guys. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to build your very own floating picture frame for a canvas painting or print, all for less than $30. So before we even start, for those of you guys wondering why it's even called a floating picture frame or what the floating frame is, you can see here that I have the frame and the canvas painting, and in between, there is a very slight gap between the two, and this runs around the entire painting so you'll never actually see where the painting is contacting the frame, and therefore it looks like it's floating within the frame. Okay, so let's start by gathering our material. The frame we're gonna be building is very simple and very cheap, so we don't need a whole lot. You'll see on the floor here that I have two pieces of pine, and they are eight feet long. They are 1.75 inches wide and 0.75 inches thick. Now this can be found at your local hardware store, and they're a few bucks a piece. One tip when buying these is make sure that they are flat and straight. Try not to get any sort of pine that is, or any other wood that is warped. It'll make your life a lot easier when you start building the frame if these things are straight. You're also gonna need some wood filler and you're also going to need paint or stain if you plan on changing the color of the wood. If you wanna leave it bare, that's fine too. You will need some fasteners. So in this case, we have some wood screws and I have number eight size screws that are one and a quarter inch long. I have flat L-shaped brackets. You'll see two of them pictured there. We're actually gonna need four of them, but I've already managed to misplace two of them. So of course I'm gonna get two more. And then optionally, we have four standard L-shaped brackets. These you may not need and I'll show you why later. Okay, so before we start cutting any wood, I want to explain the basic construction of this frame so that you guys can replicate it for any size canvas that you want to frame. What I have pictured here is the corner joint that we're gonna be using. Therefore, we're gonna use this butted corner type and optionally, you can put a L bracket up in the corner, recessed at the back, so when the canvas is in there, you don't really see it. What we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to drive screws in through the top and into this member here in order to fix this corner in place. Now, I would suggest taking this member and putting it on the top of your picture frame and the same thing on the bottom so that when we drive the screws in through the top and through the bottom, you don't necessarily see them when the picture frame is hanging on the wall. We are gonna be filling those holes with wood filler, so you shouldn't see them anyways, but just in case there are any small imperfections in how you fill those holes, it won't be nearly as noticeable. Now to size each member, we need to know three things. So we need to know the size of our canvas, the orientation at which we want to hang our canvas, and then the gap that we want to maintain around the entire canvas. Using my canvas as an example, I know that my canvas is 48 inches wide by 30 inches tall, and I want to hang my frame horizontally. I want to maintain a 1 8 inch gap around the entire painting. Starting with the two side members, I know that my canvas was 30 inches tall. And therefore, if I want to maintain a gap at the top and the bottom of one eighth of an inch, it's as simple as taking my 30 inches and adding an eighth on the top and an eighth on the bottom, which gives me 30.25 inches. So 30 and a quarter inches. So now our top and bottom members only require one more thing to consider, and that's the thickness of the side members. So my canvas was 48 inches wide with a 1 8 inch gap on either side of it. That's an extra quarter inch. So we're up to 48.25 inches. And now we have to add the thickness of the side pieces on both sides. So those side pieces were 3 quarters of an inch thick for each piece. So 3 quarters times 2 is 1.5 inches. So we're just going to add the 1.5 inches to our 48.25 inches, and we end up with 49.75 inches. And that gives me the length of the top member and the bottom member. I would also just like to recommend that you don't use a gap greater than an eighth of an inch, because when this thing's hanging on the wall, you don't want to see right through and see the wall color in between your frame and your canvas painting. So in terms of tools, you guys really don't need a whole lot. Any sort of saw will do. We're only working with very small pieces of wood here. I have a miter saw, but as long as it cuts nice square corners, that's all you really need. You're gonna need a drill, some drill bits, clamps are a bonus, measuring tape, 
and a square is also a bonus. So with our four pieces now cut, we're gonna start drilling some of the pilot holes in order to create this uh, corner joint. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be driving these screws in through the center of this member. And so these pieces here are three quarters inch thick and therefore dead center from the edge would be three eighths of an inch. So on the top piece here, you can see here that I've marked a line three eighths of an inch in from the edge. And then I'm gonna be using two screws per joint and each screw is spaced another three eighths of an inch away from these edges here. So we'll have two screws going in here and of course joining it into the side pieces. On the top pieces and on the bottom pieces, I'm gonna be using a 5 seconds drill bit to drill clearance holes through these pieces. And then I'm gonna be using a 3 seconds uh, to, dry, to drill in holes in uh, through the top edge here in order to make pilot holes for the threads into the side pieces. So after screwing together the four corners, you wanna make sure that the screws are recessed enough into the wood that you can start building up the hole with some wood filler in order to hide the screws. So you're gonna put some wood filler in there and you're gonna basically, once it dries, gonna sand it down until the whole surface is completely flat. It looks like I have just a little bit more here to go. With all the holes filled, now you can decide whether or not you wanna use these corner braces for some additional strength. If you have a very large frame, you may need these braces for some additional rigidity. But for my frame, I'm gonna skip them. If you were to use them though, you're gonna decide which side of the frame is the front and your corner braces are gonna be recessed to the back side of the frame. So if this was the back side, you'd line up the edges with the back side. So of course, when you're looking at the canvas from the front, it's not noticeable and you will not see these brackets. At this point, you're ready to paint or stain your frame. And I would suggest trying out a little test piece first. In my case, I'm using black stain. And it's recommended that I precondition the wood with some wood conditioner so the stain absorbs evenly. However, because I'm using a very dark color, I didn't think this would be necessary. If I was using a lighter color, then I would probably go with the directions and apply the conditioner so I don't get dark and light spots. But the whole thing's gonna be black, so I didn't feel it was necessary. And I'm using a foam brush to apply my stain. So the final step here is to attach the picture frame to the canvas and you're going to start by placing the canvas inside of the picture frame and placing them face down on a clean surface. Okay, so at this point with everything facing down, you're going to want to center the canvas within the picture frame and to do this, I'm using cardboard shims that I've just cut out and I've shoved them all the way around the entire frame just to achieve that consistent spacing between the two. 
You're gonna take your flat L-shaped brackets, you're gonna screw them into the frame of the canvas, and you're gonna screw them into the picture frame that you built. This is obviously gonna hold things where they are right now, and you'll be able to then remove the cardboard spacers to achieve, like I said, a consistent spacing. I've chosen to put these brackets in the center of each member rather than in the corners of the frame. And the reason for that is that these members may have a tendency to sort of start to bow over time. And this will make sure that we maintain that spacing because remember our screws are in the corner of our frame. So everything in the corner should hold nice and tight. Now you want to secure the center of each member. All right guys, so that's it. Once you have your two frames attached, it's time to hang it up on the wall. In my case, I used some regular D hooks to hang this thing up on my wall. And you'll notice that I did hang it horizontally rather than vertically, like I had mentioned earlier in the video. Once I got this thing into my space, I just thought it looked a little better in this orientation. And if I can make one more suggestion, it would be to attach your hardware to the frame of the canvas painting and not the frame that you built. And the reason for that is that the canvas frame and the canvas painting itself is likely a lot heavier and more rigid than the frame that you built. And therefore it's gonna be a lot more sturdy than hanging it from the frame that you built because of course we don't want any accidents where this thing falls off the wall. That's it, thanks for watching guys. I know this content differs a little bit from the typical car stuff that I do, but hey, it's always nice to do something nice in your home and build something that your wife or girlfriend might like. Hope that helps.